us, and we're delighted you could join us. And for the folks who are come, tuning in from home, we welcome you to the Dover Church. We are an open and affirming congregation in the United Church of Christ, which means no matter who you are or where you are on your life's journey, we welcome you here. I'd like to invite the Danielskis forward to lead us in our Advent wreath lighting. You'll see the words in uh, your bulletins. This one not on? Let's see. Hmm. And let's see. Hello? 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 That one's not working. Uh, it wouldn't be modern church if we didn't have technological challenges. Which one's the on button? The little red thing. All right. Yeah, you laugh now. Someday it's going to be you. Hello? There we go. And your candle? Lighting's tool? Dad? Um, probably right there. Boom, 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 boom. Thank you. Okay. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ. The candle of peace, remembering God's dream of a peaceful world. And the candle of joy, remembering the spirit within us who brings joy. Today, we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of love. Scripture tells us there is no fear in love. For perfect love casts out fear. God created this world in love, and this world will end in the love of God. God's love pervades all aspects of this life, from birth to death, pain to delight, strangers to lovers, God's love is there. We light this candle of love. On this day, we remember that God is love. We remember that we are invited to live in love with one another as God loves us. Help us to both feel your love, O God, and to live as you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. I invite you all to rise and join with me in singing Once in Royal David City, number 155.
Please be seated. So as you, everyone who's young knows, it's a little different this morning. We're going to have the children tell us the story of Christmas in a moment with a live streamed pageant. But first, I'd like to read you from the prophet Isaiah. Very familiar words to all of us who've been to Christmas before. So I invite you to pray with me that we might hear these words in a new way. You'll see the prayer of illumination there on page three in the middle. Let us pray together saying, O Lord, our God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. From the prophet Isaiah in the ninth chapter, beginning in the second verse. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So as I said, we have a 192023 version. 2023, not 19. <laughs> I've been doing this a while, um, but I've never done this before. Make a joyful noise. And you'll see there are places where we're going to sing, so be prepared to sing some Christmas carols with us. Uh, the screen on this side, is not on. The year is 2023 when our story opens in Dover, Massachusetts. The air is getting colder and Target has had holiday decorations up for at least six weeks. Christmas is right around the corner and the young people of the Dover shirts are hard at work preparing for a new tradition they are hosting, a Christmas concert. It's getting close to showtime, so everyone needs to make a final choice about what piece of music they will perform. But with so many festive options on the table, this decision is proving tricky. Let's see how everyone is doing. All right, before we begin your lesson, you need to decide which song you want to do for the concert. But I don't know how to choose. Well, do you have a favorite? There are so many fun Christmas hymns, it's hard to pick one. Hmm, okay. We'll have to find another way to decide. Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. Do you know when in the concert you're performing? Yeah, I'm going first. Oh, really? That's exciting. Okay, so we can think about what song it makes sense to start the concert with. Okay. For instance, maybe you should pick an Advent hymn. An Advent hymn? What is Advent? Oh, good question. Advent is the season in the church calendar that comes before Christmas. We're actually in Advent right now. But this is a Christmas concert. Would it be weird to do a song that is about Advent and not about Christmas? Well, Advent and Christmas are related. You can't have one without the other. Advent is the time we get ready for Christmas. Advent is the time we remember how much we need Christmas. Need Christmas? Yeah, I really need Christmas this year. I am so tired. I can't wait to sleep in during Christmas vacation. 
I think Santa's going to bring me a bigger bike. My bike is way too small for me. Wow, that sounds exciting. But Advent started because people needed Christmas in a different way than that. People needed Christmas because they felt like they didn't have hope. They weren't sure God was really there taking care of them. When Christmas came and Jesus was born, it showed the people that God's love and light were stronger than any darkness in the world. It helped people believe that God loved them. Well, yeah, that makes sense too. I can do an Advent, but what is a good Advent song? I can show you. We're home. We're home. Hey there, what are you working on? Today is the last day to decide what song I will do for the church's Christmas concert. And I have no idea. I think I'll, I'm just going to close my eyes and pick a random one. What does it matter? I think all the hard work you'll have put into practicing will mean a lot more if you can pick a song that's important to you. Do any of the characters of the Christmas story stick out to you? Maybe somebody in the Christmas story you can relate to especially? I don't feel, feel I have anything in common with those people. They are live lived forever ago. They talk really weird. They weren't all supposed super ridiculous. And there were sheep everywhere. Yeah, yeah, Mom. What do, does she have in common with them from the, from the Bible? Yeah, their lives were pretty different in a lot of ways. But I think when we dig a little deeper, they're a little bit more human than they seem from the nat nativity scenes and Christmas cards. Like, what about Mary? Mary? Like many Mar Mary? Mary? Yeah, Mary. She was a teenager when she had Jesus, just like teenagers today. She had a group of friends. She had plans for her life. But then God asked her if she was willing to bring Jesus into the world. That's pretty scary. She had to decide if she was okay giving up the life she imagined, if she was brave enough to be part of God's plan. She probably lost some friends over it and left home to go all the way to Bethlehem. That could have been lonely and overwhelming. We all know what it's like to feel lonely or overwhelmed or like we've just not, or just not up for the task. Hmm, Mary. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee to a young woman who is engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The young woman's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. 
Mary was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen since I am unmarried and not pregnant? The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Even, look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. Nothing is impossible for God. I am the Lord's servant. Let it be, let it be with me, just as you have said. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know Stressed. I am stressed. Why? Christmas is right around the corner, and this is meant to be a joyful time. I have the Christmas concert at church coming up, and I haven't even picked what song I'm going to do. The church concert? We signed you up for that because we thought it would be fun and festive not to stress you out. This concert is a big deal. There will be lots of people there. Everyone will be dressed up. It's Christmas, and it has to be perfect. Wow. Slow down. Christmas perfect? Where did you get that from? Every movie and book ever. Especially perfectly dressed. Everyone perfectly dressed. And perfectly happily gathered around a perfect tree all lit up. Giving each other all, all perfect gifts. Christmas is supposed to be perfect. How can it be perfect if I don't even know what song to pick? Do you think the very first Christmas was perfect? Yeah, duh, Jesus was there. Good point. It was perfect because Jesus was born, and that's the whole point. But I don't think it was perfect in the way that you're talking about. What do you mean? Well, Mary and Joseph were far from home. They weren't surrounded by their closest friends or family. Maybe they felt lonely. They had just traveled really far, so they were probably tired and dirty. They didn't have money for fancy decorations or food or clothes to celebrate the arrival of their baby. For goodness sake, Jesus was born in a stable, not even a, a nice house. That's pretty far from perfect, I guess. It's definitely not perfect the way we talk about the perfect Christmas nowadays. But you like, but like you said, Jesus was there and that was what really mattered. I see what you're doing. You're saying I don't need to stress over what song I pick. Because no matter what, it will be perfect in the first Christmas way. God will be there. Well, you said it 
a lot better than I would have. Yes. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Canarius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem. Because he was descended from the house and family of David, he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to, to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place in the inn. a reminder that we that we have to pick your song for the Christmas concert. We should do that tonight. Do you have any ideas? Let's do something really dramatic and fun and magical. Like a song about Santa Claus? For this concert, the focus is on the story of Jesus and not the story of Santa, but we could still do something fun and dramatic and extraordinary. Is there anything dramatic or extraordinary about Jesus' story? Wasn't he born in his stable and visited by some random shepherds? That sounds more ordinary to me. Yes, that's true, but do you remember who told the shepherds that Jesus had been born? I do the angels! Yes, that is pretty dramatic and extraordinary. They were just having an ordinary day watching their sheep, and then hundreds of angels appeared out of nowhere, telling them God's own son had been born nearby. Hmm, maybe, I don't know. The shepherds are ordinary people, but that's the point. It was dramatic that God chose to have ordinary people, not the richest or most powerful people, be the ones to first meet Jesus. God was showing that even ordinary people are extraordinarily important and loved. How does that sound? That does sound extraordinary. Okay, okay, I can miss. We can do a song about the angels. Do you know a good one? I have an idea. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news and of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David and Savior, who is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors.
Hey, today is the last day to pick a song for the concert. We really got to decide. Well, I have no idea. What about the three kids? The one about the wise man who comes to meet Jesus. That is a popular one that no one else is doing it. That song is so lame. Name? Are you kidding me? I read my storybook Bible that the three kings were astronomers and adventurers who set off to a place they have never been before following a star. So they went on a walk. So what? I think it's a bit more just than a walk. Who knows what they faced on their journey? Floods, landslides, robbers, wild beasts. They had to be brave and to trust what they it would all be worth it so they could see the newborn son of god and 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 when you think about it it was worth it it's been two thousand years and we still remember them hmm, that is pretty cool i'd like to be famous for all eternity but most importantly they got to meet jesus and the gifts they brought probably allowed mary and joseph to care for their family, especially when they had to run away, from, run away to Egypt from King Herod. All right, all right. You convinced us. The wise men aren't so lame after all. Yeah, sure. Let's give it a shot. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Ju Judea, my Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When the king heard this, when King Herod heard this, heard this, he was frightened. One moment, please. Calling together all the chiefs and priests and scribes of the people, he inquired them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi then and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he had sent sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Oh, go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and play him. Oh, oh. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was born. When they saw that star, the star they had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they know down and paid him homage. Then they, opening their tre tre treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they had left for their own country by another road.
What do you mean? This Christmas concert. We have to pick a song, and she has the stupidest idea. Oh, picking a song. That can be stressful. But there's got to be a better way than fighting about it. I don't have a better idea. <laughs> well, okay. Maybe we can decide by thinking about what is the takeaway that you want to have people learn from your concert? Takeaway? Yeah, takeaway. What do you want people to leave feeling like? What is the message of your concert? Like. What is the message of Christmas? Yes, exactly. Um, presents? <laughs> uh, well, okay, but maybe a deeper message. Like, how do you think the people in Jesus' time felt? The shepherds and the wise men and the people of Bethlehem? How are we supposed to know? You can try imagining. Can you imagine living in a time when things felt hard and maybe even scary? Maybe your family didn't have a lot of money, or the people in charge didn't treat you very well. Maybe it felt like there was a lot of sickness around, or like people in your community had a hard time getting along. Yeah, I can imagine that. Maybe things had gotten so hard that you started to feel hopeless. Hopeless? Like nothing was ever going to get better. Like the things that are bad, and there's nobody there to fix them. Um, that sounds really rough. But then God sends Jesus. And Jesus is God made human. And he was sent to be your neighbor and your friend and to show you that God loves you so much. How do you think that would make you feel? Probably a lot better. Even hopeful. Maybe a little joyful too. Great. Are there more outtakes that we're going to see? No, that's it? I remember in 2012 when the church was turning 250 years old, and I was sitting right here with the committee that was overseeing the renovations we were going to do, and I said, you know, someday we may want to have a camera in the church so that people can record what happens here and see from away. No. There will never, ever, 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 ever be a camera in the Dover Church. And then this thing called COVID came. And a week later, we had three cameras in the Dover Church. And we're able to do this. Now, those of you who are old enough to remember, there used to be actual people up here, and they would be falling down and screaming and pulling down the Christmas tree, and no one could hear them say anything, and everyone's parents were on the edge of their seat with terror that their child was going to ruin the Christmas pageant. And now we have multiple takes to iron out all the worst faux pas and have the audio be so that most of us can hear most of it. Even so, that our associate minister could sit down and write the pageant for us and then go have a baby of her own and not even be around for the whole production of the scene. So the lesson for this morning's Christmas pageant, for Christmas in general, is the way we talk about it changes, but the message remains the same. The joy 
the happiness, the hopefulness. And also, I was thinking to myself as I was sitting there, if I live long enough, I'm definitely going to be showing some of these videos at rehearsal dinner parties in years to come. <laughs> Just too precious. And that's the spirit of Christmas, a celebration in which we all play our part. Whether we remember 50, 60 years ago when we were in the pageant, in this place or someplace else, or looking forward to the time when our children or our grandchildren will grow up and be in a pageant. And we'll wonder what we can do then because of the possibilities. So I thank you. Everyone who participated in that, I thank Kayla. And I thank our live stream team and all the directors who held the cameras and all our actors and actresses. And we thank God especially for the story of the birth of Jesus. We're going to sing a whole song, the first Noel. If you came with an offering this morning, a gift that you'd like to give to the church so that we can do things like this, or if you came with a prayer, a joy, or a concern that you'd like me to lift up in prayers, and I promise you, I know our kids are here, so I'm not going to pray very long, but I'm going to pray a little bit. Our ushers will come by while we sing the first Noel, number 141. So please rise as you are comfortable and able.
please be seated. The Lord be with you. Holy God, we thank you for calling us from our homes this morning to begin to celebrate the birth of Jesus, to hear the old story with all new characters, and to know that we too play our part in this drama, in the things that we do with our lives that share your love, in the ways that we heal the world through our acts of mercy and kindness. We give you thanks for all the joy that is ours and yet to be ours this evening and tomorrow. And we pray that we might all be safe and kind and gentle with each other as we gather. We give you thanks for this day and all the blessings of it, for the gift of our lives. And we ask that you would help us count our blessings every day, that we might gain wise hearts. For we pray for those who suffer this day, O oh God, in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for Alan as he continues to fight for his life and for Dottie by his side and with us this morning. And we pray that the Christmas story lightens her walk. We pray for Tim and Lynn and James and Robbie all facing their cancers, and we pray that they might be filled with hope. For it is hope, O oh God, that keeps us moving forward into something next rather than giving up. And that is our prayer for them. In the same way that we pray for peace, peace in Gaza and Israel, that these people could find a way to live together in safety and security and wholeness, not far from Bethlehem. We pray for peace in Ukraine and in our own hearts. And we ask your blessing upon this church and all of us, that we might be ministers of your light and love in the world, sharing our gifts and our talents wherever life offers us opportunity as we follow Jesus in whose name we pray, and who prays with us even now as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of announcements before we sing our last song. Some of you are new here. You're all welcome to join us in coffee hour, afterwards in Craft Hall, for coffee, a chance to meet angels face to face if they don't live in your own home, um, and to share a little Christmas joy. We have services this evening at 4 o'clock, 5.30, and 10 o'clock. So if you'd like to come back, there's going to be brass right here and choirs right there, and I'll still be right here. But, um, you know, someone once said to me, Max, Christmas is perfect. The only thing you can do is wreck it by talking too much. So I won't say too much more. We thank all of you who participated in our stewardship drive. If you've yet to want to pledge the church, your gifts is what make everything possible. So please think about doing that soon. We're going to be forming a budget. Um, and Kayla will be back next Sunday. She's actually in Texas with her in-laws, so celebrating her first Christmas with a baby. So we send her great joy. And on your way out, you can see um, a little nativity scene. I was thinking back. Kayla and I, I think you were part of it, Josie. You helped us paint the nativity out front. In the middle of COVID, with masks on, outdoors, on plywood, we painted this little nativity scene. And Kayla's sister, soon to, no, they, 
I think they were her sisters-in-law already, helped us paint it. And so we have this little memento. It's great. Um, you have a lot more gifts in the entrance to Craft Hall, by the way. Are there any announcements anyone else wants to make? That's the spirit. <laughs> How about... <laughs> Ah, Betty. Yes. Please, if you want to take home a, a poinsettia, and you're supposed to take home a poinsettia, not, it's not a free-for-all, but if you're supposed to take home a poinsettia, take one from the narthex, because we'd like this to sort of make it to 10 o'clock tonight. Fair enough? Good. Go tell it on the mountain. Number one, no, 160. Please rise and join with me. So let us go forth into the world, bringing with us some token of love from the story, from the songs, from the hope that we have yet to live. And may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and fill us with that peace. Amen. See, they made it. Yes, you have a lot more gifts. Yes, like a whole nother basket. <laughs> 